the battle lines of the FAA's remote ID are very much drawn. Even most drone operators who support the concept of remote ID are highly concerned about the stipulations within the final rule regarding the broadcast of the pilot's location. Well, things around remote ID just got a little more spicy. Hey everyone, my name is Sean and welcome to Geeks of Honor. As regular viewers will know, we bring you a range of geek-focused content, including drones, tech, and even space. This includes videos like this one, looking at the drone news from around the world. If this sounds like the type of content you enjoy, then subscribe now. Let me know in the comments below if you support the general concept of remote ID for drones. It will be really interesting to see where the audience falls. Now, before we talk about the most recent news on remote ID, let us start with a quick reminder of what remote ID is and discuss one of the most controversial parts of it. If you know this stuff already and want to skip to the juice of this video, there are chapters below. Okay, so unless you are a US drone flyer who's been living under a rock for the past couple of years, you will be aware that the FAA, through regulations, is bringing in remote ID for your drone. Most drones flown in the US will need to transmit a range of information designed to help identify who is flying the drone, where the drone is being flown within the airspace, that type of thing, and more controversially, the location of the remote pilot operating the drone. Part 89 requires the following eight message elements to be broadcast from a standard remote identification unmanned aircraft. One, the unmanned aircraft unique identifier. Two, an indication of the control stations, that's your controller, latitude and longitude. Three, an indication of the control station's altitude. Four, an indication of the unmanned aircraft's latitude and longitude. Five, an indication of the unmanned aircraft's altitude itself. Six, a time mark. And seven, an indication of the emergency status of the unmanned aircraft. And then finally, eight, velocity. Additionally, all standard remote identification unmanned aircraft must meet certain minimum requirements regarding the transmission of the message elements, including the minimum performance requirements related to positional accuracy, geometric altitude accuracy, message latency, and message transmission rates. This part about remote pilot location is a significant issue to many people in terms of security and privacy. The thought that someone can find the pilot of a nearby drone seems to most people within the hobby and industry to be something that potentially lacks foresight. In a previous video we published a couple of months ago, we showed footage from an FAA live stream where they discussed this issue. The points put forward were that unmanned aviation needed to come in line with manned aviation, which of course, as you know, you can currently track manned aircraft, the route it's taking, and even look up previous flights, etc. With manned aviation, it is pretty easy as well to know where the pilot is, of course. Although, with manned aviation, the pilot is many thousands of feet in the air behind a locked door or within the bounds of a usually secure airport. However, a drone pilot flying a job or a hobby flight is certainly more open to approach from a range of people. These could be inquisitive onlookers, someone looking to confront their flight reasons, or admittedly more rarely, but still seriously, the potential for the remote pilot location information to become something of a criminal playground. The response in the same FAA live stream was to point out that such issues are for law enforcement to deal with and that they would look at it again once it becomes a problem. So with that background in mind, now we go back to the spicy new update to Remote ID. We are currently in the middle of a period where the standards body and the manufacturers try to work out some middle ground, essentially, in terms of producing Remote ID compliant ways of tracking drones in an affordable way. There has been a lot of talk about the potential to update the firmware of DJI drones, for instance, to omit the required information and therefore reduce the cost implications for existing drone owners. Also, the RID modules, which are basically the devices that we'll be able to add to our drones to make them compliant, need to be of a small size and, of course, affordable. During this work, the FAA has felt it appropriate to clarify their position in terms of accuracy and how close the remote pilot's true location the remote ID signal needs to identify. Essentially what we've had here is a situation where the manufacturers and the standards body have been looking at these types of things and including looking at the DJI drones as far as updating firmware to show um, the, the pilot location. But essentially the FAA is saying that won't work because it won't be accurate enough. For this they turn to a policy statement published within the Federal Register. 
The policy statement is effective from November 22nd, 2021, and the summary reads as follows. This action clarifies FAA policy regarding the existing accuracy requirements for the reported geometric altitude of the control station of a standard remote identification unmanned aircraft, so the controller of the drone. The FAA describes one acceptable way producers of unmanned aircraft can meet the minimum performance requirement for the accuracy of the control station's reported geometric altitude. The FAA determined that this action is necessary to inform developers of means of compliance of one potential pathway to meet the performance requirement for the control station's reported geometric altitude. So essentially what they're saying here is that they felt the need to clarify that any remote ID signal will need to accurately pinpoint the remote pilot's location. And rather than stipulate the design or physical tech involved, they have provided a path to achieving this. Later in the policy statement, this FAA clarify the accuracy requirements in terms of identifying the ground station location and hence the drone pilot. Part 89 establishes the accuracy requirement for the reported geometric altitude for the control station of a standard remote identification unmanned aircraft, specifically requiring that the reported geometric altitude of the control station must be accurate to within 15 feet of the true geometric altitude with 95% probability. The remote ID final rule did not specify how a means of compliance should address this requirement, in order to guide producers to develop standard remote identification unmanned aircraft that meet the FAA standards, this policy statement informs developers of one potential means of compliance that would be acceptable to the FAA to demonstrate compliance with meeting the geometric altitude requirement. Seems pretty straightforward, doesn't it? So essentially, the FAA here are saying, okay, with all of the different systems, with all the different types of, of tracking that, that are being talked about, we want to ensure you guys know that it needs to be within 15 feet accuracy at a probability of 95%. That's pretty accurate. The policy outlines such potential means as follows. A means of compliance that requires the drone control station position source to be a GNSS receiver utilizing GPS and wide area augmentation system satellite signals to determine the geometric altitude of the control station. This would be an acceptable method for a means of compliance to demonstrate that the unmanned aircraft is built according to its specifications. An acceptable method for a means of compliance to demonstrate that the unmanned aircraft built according to its specifications would meet the accuracy requirement. Now this unfortunately means that the standard remote ID built into the drones US flyers will buy will probably based on the feedback from manufacturers be more expensive due to the requirements of such close accuracy needed to identify pilot's position within 15 feet with a 95% probability. Now, many within the sector felt this level of accuracy was not required and as such prompted this clarification from the FAA. Now, because the technology involves GNSS, we are talking about the potential for far more existing drones that are on the market at the moment that are in our houses to be ruled out of gaining a remote ID module due to, amongst other things, cost, let alone where this leaves the FPV self-build community. Now, this is a policy and those can of course change. But as we roll down the road to remote ID deadlines and the requirement to have this tech in your drone, it seems we are looking at the first significant hurdle in terms of producing compliant drones at a reasonable price. Let me know in the comments below if you feel the accuracy needs to be that close, 15 feet of the true location as opposed to a general location. Does that really give the level of information that will make enough of a difference to justify a potentially more expensive solution to the end user? I'd really like to hear your thoughts on this and why is the FAA so adamant that the locations must be so accurate? Until next time on Geeksvana, Sean out. Wow.